is the time. Let's start. I'm going into presentation mode. Hello, everyone. My name is Kate, and I'm co-founder and CEO at Setka. Setka is a featured WordPress VIP technology partner, and it's a smart tool to help distributed teams design more engaging and converting content. I'm here to talk to you about what's beyond the blog posts. I actually worked in the branded content space for more than 15 years. I also have a certification in usability. And last year, Native Advertising Institute added me on the list of significant women in native advertising worldwide. I started in communication strategy at the Leo Burnett Network. And then I launched my first startup, Not Yet Satka, a digital publishing company uh, serving millions of readers every month. Back when we started in 2006, the digital advertising market was already pretty cluttered. So we chose to differentiate, uh, focusing on branded content experience quality, optimizing for the engagement along with the views. Our experience first approach gained us a lot of industry recognition as we won over 65 international advertising awards, including Cannes Lions and Webby's. This 10 year journey helped me to see a direct link between content design and content performance. Today, when all our lives are online, we expect a lot more from technology and digital interaction. That is why most innovation comes now not from solving a functional problem, but from finding a better way of doing something that provides a better experience for the user. Before Uber and Lyft first appeared, we didn't really know how much we needed them and how broken our taxi experience was. If you think of that, most of the innovation now comes from experienced disruptors. We know that customer experience leaders outperform mainstream by freefold in exceeding expected business goals and beating the competition. Experience sells, period. But experience is much more about emotions than the facts. We are human beings and we make emotional and irrational decisions all the time, no matter how much we want to believe otherwise. And when we are enjoying something, we are much more likely to actually explore it. So it's like when you go to a party or a networking event where you don't know anyone. So you think to yourself, okay, I'll stay for a, a minute uh, and I bounce, but you get there and the crowd seems very nice and the food is delicious and the venue is beautiful. So you find yourself enjoying the conversations and meeting new people and staying much longer than you actually expected. And it's the same with, um, with everything else we interact with digitally or offline in our daily lives. We demand great experiences. And when we have a choice, we would always prefer to spend our time and our energy on something that makes us feel good. I know that we are used to saying, don't judge the book by its cover. However, in reality, people think that it, it, when it looks better, it must be better. We can trick ourselves into, into thinking that something is more usable if it's aesthetically pleasing. People produce a lot of quick assumptions based on emotions. Did you know that it takes less than just one second to make an initial judgment of your web page content? I know that the topic of my talk is called Beyond the Blog. And I'm not here to talk you out of doing any text-based content or 
to introduce you to a new format you should include in an already pretty big list of things you're doing to stay on top of your game. Blogs are not going anywhere soon. It's a great format to share information, mainly because it's easy to produce and also easy to skim. It's used by many marketers and the amount of blogs published monthly with WordPress alone is huge. But because it's so popular, it's also very competitive. So I want to talk to you about great or even outstanding reading experiences with your own content. During our interview with John Collins, director of content at Intercom, we learned that he has a cool post-it note on his laptop that says, do less better. So for them, it's not about publishing more, it's about raising the quality bar. We all remember how ridiculous websites looked like back in the days. Um, just walls of text mixed with a bunch of links, horrible colors. Can you imagine if websites or apps look like this to this day? But we learned more about how people interact with online content. And the more technology advanced, we were able to create better experiences on the web. Now, please take a look here. This is the blogs and how they looked like back in the days. Brands today are running great branded content campaigns. But when it comes to owned content, it's often not as advanced. So how can you move away from just producing content to being a successful content experience disruptor? Let's think together about how you can take your knowledge and your creativity from your marketing campaigns and apply them more to the daily on content production. Let's look at some examples of content experiences and brands that are doing it really, really well. A few things we see here. Beautiful, unique layouts, great use of imagery, and quotes to break up chunks of text. Creative use of interactive elements and great typography. But I think that the key idea they figured out is that people don't read the way we tend to think they do. This is a park and probably the most popular metaphor when it comes to user experience. It's a concept of desired paths. People are making their own paths and people are different and most people don't act the way we want or expect them to act. And we need to stop assuming people will read our content in the order we expect them to. Nielsen Norman Group, uh, a thought leader in the usability field, has studied how people read on the web by tracking their eye movements. And they've discovered that 79% of people are scanning the content. Instead of reading it, they glance at words, phrases, headings, numbers, of your content and it just always happening out of order. And it may seem like laziness, but it's actually an efficient information seeking behavior that allows users to avoid information overload. But what's even more interesting is that scanning technique changes depending on the design of your content. So when confronted with a large block of text often um, often presented as a wall of text. Users uh, apply so-called F pattern. They read most of the way across the few first lines, but as they work their way down the page, they read less and less. But if the content is presented differently with clear chunks of information, with subheadings, enough white space, 
and thoughtful use of imagery and data visualization, readers switch to a different pattern, paying more attention to the page content. And this gives us more chance to create better experience and engage the user. Our disability team at SATCA has gone through a ton of research to put together a step-by-step -step guide with four, 40 be best practices on how to optimize your own content. It's really available, so you can start making changes right away, and I'll share a link with you right after the talk in the chat, but I want to explain the main principles first. So the first principles, and there are four of them, uh, it's called comprehension. Basically, making it easier for customers to understand the content on a higher level. It's exactly what we just discussed. Think of your content as if it's an, if, if it's an interface of its own. The second principle is legibility. Things like fonts that are hard to read, contrast, or an often case with using images for infographics and tables that become hardly readable on a mobile screen as they become smaller. The next principle is engagement. By maximizing the use of visuals and thoughtful use of animations, you can draw users deeper and deeper into your content and add more surprise and delight to the experience. The last principle, last but not the least, is differentiation. You don't want to make your content look good. You want it to feel like it's native to your brand and to make sure you know they know, your customers know, that you are behind it. Another layer to that is differentiation could also contribute to higher trust. And this is an interesting example that Facebook shared at F8 a couple of years ago. They've been experimenting with Mashable and they've left Mashable to add more branded elements to their content in instant articles. And that led to a higher level of trust due to content recognition. So it worked. Now, when we nailed all the quick fixes, let's talk about what sets great content experience apart from outstanding content experience. And I'm sure that many of you remember an iconic editorial called Snowfall, done by New York Times in 2012. It's designed beautifully with great typography, imagery, interactions, and also great immersive sceneries and video infographics. But I dare to, but I want to dare to say that what really makes it outstanding is not the huge effort that was invested in video production or a huge budget invested in video production is the fact that it was thoughtfully designed to help readers understand the story better, to figure out why certain skiers were able to survive, uh, the location of the tracks and so on. It's not designed by a template. It's designed to deliver this particular story in the best possible way with the, the reader in center and in mind. If we skip the video part and focus on the editorial design part, you can afford to get there much more often if you allow more people on your team to share their views. Transition to becoming experienced creators means changing the process itself, means making the process more inclusive. And e-consultancy in Adobe did a study with uh, more than 17,000 marketers participating in a poll. And they've learned that 35% of customer experience leaders have cross-experience teams organized around customer journeys. And it's 30% more the case compared to so-called mainstream. So the process where you have a writer that 
writes text and a designer that designs layouts and an engineer that builds them or updates them is no longer good enough. And it's actually pretty broken. It's not just inefficient, it's standing in the way of truly great creative ideas of being more agile and learning faster from customer feedback. We need to trust that anyone with an idea can be empowered to design the best experiences for their customers, as long as they, equip, they are equipped with the right set of tools. And I will give you an example from one of our customers. While we tend to work with larger companies we do have few hyper growth startups that do amazing things in content marketing. I realized that when it comes to any type of transformation, it is sometimes useful for a larger organization to learn from smaller and more flexible teams and how they are solving similar challenges. So our client Miro, a startup that provides remote work uh, and collaboration tools, They've always had a largely distributed and remote content team. From the very early days, they've set up their process and tools in the way that fosters collaboration, inclusivity, and creativity. By using their own whiteboarding tools and Satka, they actually were able to design amazing looking layouts like this one, interactive blogs and interviews from start to finish without having take, to take up too much time from their engineering teams. And this year, they've been nominated for the Webby Awards for their branded publication. Making technology accessible to as many people as possible across all areas of business will empower creative thinkers. It will also streamline the time between having a great idea or great feedback and seeing it come to life. With this mindset, organizations can realize the untapped potential that sits within their content teams already today. By democratizing content tools and taking a more collaborative approach to solving content challenges, you as marketing leaders can open content design to a more diverse group of people, create a more inclusive environment and ultimately design better experience for everyone. You might be thinking now that you already have a great blog and process, or you might think all of this, great, all of this is great, but where do I start? I would like to encourage you to take some time and have an honest assessment of the following points. Are you designing your content, your pages, or ebooks for better reading experience? What are your current measurements? What do you measure? And are you measuring your own content user experience the same way you measure it with web pages or your landing pages? How do you empower more? people to be involved in content in general and content design. And the last but not the least, if you think beyond the blog or even beyond your content strategy, what is the bigger impact you're making with your content as a brand? What is the mission behind your content strategy? And would a better content experience more trust or more comprehension to make a bigger difference as brand. So I'm to the interface of hopping. Um, that's it from me. Thank you so much. I hope it was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And uh, please reach out via an email here. I'll make it larger and I'll drop it into the chat right now. And come by our, our virtual booth. The link to the framework I've mentioned um, is right here. So 
I'm dropping it to the chart right now. 